Okay, welcome back everybody. Thank you for returning, if you did. We are now on chapter four, creation, the 1689 Baptist Confession of Faith in modern English. So I was talking, Jim, I was talking to Nick Cervantes at church Sunday. And uh, he said, uh, you know, what you been up to or whatever. And uh, eventually got around to telling him we have been recording a podcast. And then he's like, oh, cool. Send me the link. So I sent him the link to the YouTube. And I think he just happened to listen to the episode where we were talking about him. About, uh, you know, Mellage. So where's my phone? Oh, hold on. That's funny. I, th I think he just happened to because he sends me a text. Hold on. He sent me a, te a text that says, Mewage is what brings us together today. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. And then uh, it took me a second to be like, why is he sending me that? Because uh, uh, I didn't know he was listening to it or whatever. I was like, why is he sending me that, you know? And then I was like, oh, and then, uh, you know, two and two, I put two and two together. And of course, I was like, right. oh, that's right. So that's funny. unless you listen to multiple ones, you know, it's just funny that he happened to listen to that one. But he says, good to hear yeah. your voice and all that stuff. So, oh, cool. at, you know, asked how you're doing. And I told him about your knee surgery and whatnot. So did he ever get his house built and everything? Good question. Or is he still living in a trailer? Good question. <laughs> really good question, sir. Yeah, so I just thought I'd let you know. It's hilarious. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I, I doubt he listened to every one of them until he found it, you know. So yeah. I, yeah probably it was either the first or second one. It was a few minutes into it because we were talking about uh, it was one of the chapters. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. Yeah. And I was, it took him like, why is he sending me this? You know, and I and then I'm like, did he misspell misspell this stuff, Mellage and together? Yeah. And I'm like, what is going on? Yeah, he's like, oh yeah, that's right. We were talking about that. All right, Mr. Davis, do you want to pray us in? Yeah. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this uh, nice day we had today here in South Carolina. And thank you for a nice Lord's Day we had yesterday. Worship you, rest, and fellowship with other believers. We pray your blessing on this time as we consider uh, Chapter 4 of the London Baptist Confession on creation. We know you created all things. You put your likeness on human beings and you put your image in people's hearts so we are without excuse we all know that you created everything we pray that uh, as we discuss these issues today that anyone else that might be listening will come to the conclusion that you are the creator and you are to be worshipped bless this time in jesus name amen amen Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate that. Um, chapter four, creation. I shall. These are pretty short. There's only three paragraphs in this chapter. We'll see how much we can get out of it. Um, paragraph one. In the beginning, God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit was pleased to create or make the world and all things in it, both visible, bo both visible and invisible. In a six-day period, and all very good. He did this to manifest the glory of his eternal power, wisdom, and goodness. What say you, Jim? Yeah, let's, uh, let's go through a few scripture uh, proofs here. John 1, 2, he was in the beginning with God. One three, all things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Hebrews one two, but in these last days he has spoken to us by his son, whom he has whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom he also he created the world. 
Job 26, 13, his, by, his, by his wind, the heavens were made fair. His hand pierced the fleeing serpent. Colossians 1, 16, for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. Genesis 1, 31, and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good, and there was evening and there was morning. The sixth day, Romans 1, 20, for his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made, so they are without excuse. Amen. Just one little side note for us to tell you. Um, Nick did say that it was nice to hear. Um, I, I don't know if he used the word casual, like a ca more casual take on, you know, the LBCs. You know, he said it was nice to, to have. I don't know if he used the word casual, but that's the word that I'm going to use. Like it was nice to hear a more casual take on it, you know, not such a, you know, three hour deep, deep take on it. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So right. He said right, it as a compliment and that's the way I took it. So. All right. Nice to have. Uh... Some feedback, huh? Nice to have some feedback from somebody. Feedback, yeah. All right, take it back on it. What are we thinking, Jim? <laughs> well, you know, they got the. You've had. There's been arguments over six day creation and. Was it a literal six days or was it, uh, you know, a long period of time? Uh, some people call it, there's, there's a thing called theistic evolution, which basically tries to incorporate evolution in with creation at the same time. Um, but I, I pretty much hold to the six day creation. And then, uh, you know, God, I, I don't know why he couldn't do it, you know, so I don't know, but it is, it, you know, it's been a, it's been a, uh, an argument through church history, especially, you know, especially in the last couple hundred years, with modern science and stuff, it's all trying to explain things and, uh, or explain things away, but that's where we have to start is that God created everything. And that gives us, it gives us meaning. It gives us value. You know, the whole evolution thing and the whole materialism concept. If we're just a bunch of random cells that mutated, then what does it matter if I murder my neighbor or I hate my neighbor or I love my neighbor? They're not, they're worthless. You know, they're, they're just, they're just what, whatever the, whatever you can get for their bones and tissues and stuff, whatever they're worth is what they're worth. If that, if it's just, everything's just material. So, you know, you get your value because you've been created by God. So no wonder you see a lot of, I mean, the suicide rates going up and people are treating people like, treating each other like dirt and why not right we are dirt <laughs> yeah if you have no value in it no one else has any value because we're all just space dust we're all just you know, yeah. yeah we're all just monkeys what you know why not why shouldn't i kill you know why shouldn't i murder especially if there's no heaven and hell uh well, people people act surprised when bad things happen when right. that should be the normal thing bad th you should be surprised when something good happens <laughs> yeah it's basically just survival yeah. of the fittest right yeah why, and, why uh, shouldn't i take yeah. everything that i want how, how can you how can you say something else is wrong when there is no right and wrong because who makes the rules you know right the strongest whoever's the strongest is making the rules and you've seen what happened in the 20th century when that happened. So 
this doesn't really concern that in this paragraph. It's not what it's talking about, <laughs> but that's what comes out of that. If, you're, if right. there is no creation, there is no God, then what does it matter how I treat my neighbor? Yeah, it just turns into uh, my my preference against your preference. It's interesting where God, you know, it says in the first sentence there, both visible and invisible. So even the things we can't see uh, could be talking about heaven and angels. And that's what I would think. The spiritual beings and the, the wind itself is invisible. You can see the results of the wind. You can see trees, you know, shaking and leaves and everything, but you can't see the wind. But I believe it's talking about, you know, even 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 heaven itself is a created a created uh, thing. So angels, you know, the the uh, heavenly creatures and the earthly creatures were all created and set in six days. Any comments, Mike? Do you think it was a literal six days? <laughs> yeah, I believe it was a literal six days. Okay. Six 24-hour day period. 24-hour day period. Six 24-hour. Yeah, okay. That was my follow-up question. How many hours in that day? All right. Very good. If it wasn't, I don't really care, but I'm not, you know, I don't believe in a long some people argue for thousands or millions of years of creation. I just don't under, I don't get it. Right. It doesn't fit into it. Doesn't doesn't seem to fit into to the way God works. The last sentence there, he did this to manifest the glory of his eternal power, wisdom, and goodness. Everything God does is for his glory first. And obviously to manifest his power and his wisdom and his goodness. So God is very wise, very powerful, and very good. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he he created everything for his glory. All right. And uh, yeah, let's go to let's let's uh, fair out fair it out some more. All right. Paragraph uh, number paragraph two. two. After God had made all the other creatures, he created humanity. He made them male and female with rational and immortal souls, thereby making them suited to that life lived unto God for which they were created. They were made in the image of God, being endowed with knowledge, righteousness, and true holiness. They had the law of God written in their hearts and the power to fulfill it and the power to fulfill it. Even so, they could still transgress the law because they were left to the liberty of their own will which was subject to change. With rational couple, and immortal good. souls. Go to a couple of verses here. Yes, sir. Genesis 1, 27. So God created man in his own image. In, in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Genesis 2, 7. Then the Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living creature. Ecclesiastes 7:29 see this alone I found that God ha God made man upright but they have sought out many schemes. Genesis 1:26 then God said let us man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth. And over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Romans 2.14, For when Gentiles who do not have the law by nature do what the law requires, they are a law to themselves, even though they do not have the law. Verse 15, They show that the work of the law is written on their hearts, while their conscience also bears witness, and their conflicting thoughts accuse or even excuse them. Genesis 3, 6, so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Uh, the, I don't know if you want to take it sentence by sentence on paragraph 2. 
I'm looking at that sentence right in the middle where it says they were made in the image of God, being endowed with knowledge, righteousness, and true holiness. What I understand the knowledge and righteousness. What do you can you explain that true holiness part? Or what your understanding is? Oh well, yeah, my understanding is before the fall they were completely righteous and holy. So they were Holiness usually means, uh, or holy in the in the Old Testament, meant set apart, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so they were set apart. F- f- uh, the context there, I would I would assume, means uh, they were they were sinless. They were set apart, obviously, from the animals. When it talks about how God breathed the breath of life uh into the into mankind he does it doesn't say in the anywhere else in genesis that he breathed the breath of life into the animals so there's a difference between us and the animals um and he set mankind over and you know over the animals to subdue and to you know basically rule over the animal kingdom so I believe true holiness means they were set apart and they were perfect in every way. But still with the capability of sin. But at the time they were created, they were sinless. I believe besides, just my opinion, but I believe besides, besides Christ himself who was god in the flesh that adam was the wisest the wisest man ever created in his in his sinless in his sinless nature before he sinned because he had there was nothing between him and god you know as far as relationship wise and you know i just believe he must have been very very wise you know very intelligent being i think the fall uh, had you know took some of that away hmm. but i don't believe this uh neanderthal stuff where you know they walked around on all fours and carried in you know and carried right. clubs and lived in caves and no cheetah i don't um i don't believe it. cover tarzan type yeah, yeah. Fred, Fred flintstone stuff no i don't believe that stuff but i mean i'm sure people lived in caves because people need a place to live or you know but i don't believe in cave men as far as they couldn't talk you know, I right. believe Adam it was a language from day one. How did Adam name the animals if he didn't have any language, you know? Right. So that's a good yeah, point. I believe that believe Adam was a very intelligent man. He named them with grunts. Ugh, cow. Two grunts for cows, three grunts for gorillas. Yeah. <laughs> but uh you know, they were made in the uh well let's go back up. He made them male and female with rational and immortal souls, so mankind was going to live forever. And uh, the animals, it does not say anywhere in the Bible that the animals were created with immortal souls. Thereby making them suited to that life lived unto God for which they were created. So they, we were created to to... Just like the Westminster Confession says, you know, uh, Westminster uh, Shorter Catechism, to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. So we had immortal souls, and we were righteous and holy, and they had a direct relationship with God. You know, I mean, just think about that. You know, yeah. The Bible Bible talks about how God God came down in the in the cool of the evening. You know like God really came down, but you know what, it, just to put it in human terms, to fellowship with Adam and Eve, you know, and man, that would, that would have been awesome. Well, doesn't it say he walked with them in the garden? Yeah, came down in the cool of the evening, and after they sinned, he came down one day, and where are you? He knew where they were, but he wanted them to say what the, what was going on, and they're hiding because they had sinned, and they were guilty, And but yeah, just to just to walk with God, you know. That, that would have been that, should, that was awesome, you know. 
So man was created to fellowship with God and sin, you know, sin ruined everything, but before the fall, and there are different, uh, you know, how long, you know, they ca- they call it, theologians call the, the probation period, you know, the, the period before Adam fell. We haven't got to it yet, but, you know, we get to where, where uh, they sin, you know, and there was only one thing they were not allowed to do, you know, and they did it, so. Right. But sticking with this paragraph, uh, they had the law of God written in their hearts and the power to fulfill it. Even so, they could still transgress the law because they were left to the liberty of their own will. So they were perfect, but they had the capability to sin. Does that mean they had free will? They had the ultimate free will. Which we don't have now because our will is tainted. Our will is bent toward evil. Right. Because of the fall. So we are not neutral like they were. We are bent toward evil. Bent toward sin. Normally we are going to choose sin. <laughs> over. Wow, that, that's a... That's a I, they, yeah, okay. I, I never realized that they had complete free will. And that ours right. is not you know we we choose within our nature i i never thought about right. it like that right that they had a free will that we don't that we don't even that we don't have today that we'll no, never know no. oh wow i never thought about that yeah the first time i heard that concept i had to i had to think it over you know i was like wow cuz i had never heard that before you know yeah i didn't know why i was the way i was <laughs> You know, why do I struggle so much? Why do I always want to do what the wrong thing? <laughs> I read uh, I read uh, a couple books. One of them was The Bondage of the Will from Martin Luther, and that was that was that really opened my eyes. Luther wrote that uh, basically, you know, during the Reformation against Pelagianism, which Pelagians Pelagius was a theologian way back in the early church that said that mankind is basically good and he can he could live a perfect life doesn't hurt to have some grace from god but he doesn't need it and augustine said you're crazy man (laughs) basically i don't think he used those words but he said no no that's not how it works you know so luther and the roman catholic church is basically semi-pelagian they believe that mankind has the ability to basically live live a perfect life and uh, they need help from God, but they can do most of it on their own. So he was basically writing against that, against semi-Pelagianism so, and Pelagianism. Very good book if you want to study on the uh, the bondage of the will, the how man's man's uh, will is, is bent toward sin, bent toward evil. Man, you know, I, unless I would have heard it from someone, someone else, I would, I don't think I would have ever, thought about it that way aren't you glad we're doing this podcast (laughs) yeah i learn something every time yeah man for sure okay are we good on that one yep all right all right paragraph three paragraph three of three for chapter four creation in addition to the law written in their hearts they received a command not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, as long as they obeyed this command, they were happy in their communion with God and had dominion over the creatures. Genesis 2.17 But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day you shall eat of it, the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. Excuse me, Genesis 1.26 And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds of the heavens. And over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Verse 28, and God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So that part, uh, Genesis 2, 17. Uh... But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. What does that What does that mean? You shall surely die. Well, I believe uh, 
obviously they spiritually died. They lost their communion with God. Their relationship was severed at that point. So they did were they not, go? They could have physic. He could have physically killed them, but uh, they 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 didn't die that day. But they died years later. So there was no death before that. So they they did die physically, but not that day. But they did die spiritually. Okay. <clears throat> Their perfect so, holiness and righteousness was gone. And so their their relationship with God was severed. No more were they going to walk in the cool of the evening in, in the garden. Because God cannot get God cannot stand that he can't be in this in the he can't be in the presence of sin. Do you think at that moment they went from immortal bodies to mortal bodies? Or do you think the bodies were mortal the whole time? No, I think their bodies were immortal because okay. uh, without sin, there is no death. Death is death is a curse, is a result of sin. So if there's no sin, there's no death. So no animal had died. As far as I know, no plant had died. And then, you know, later on when it talks about, well, we're going to, the next chapter is divine providence. So we don't really get into that. But, you know, when God... When God made skins for Adam and Eve to cover themselves, that was the he had to kill an animal to do that. And that was the first time you hear about death in the Bible. Okay. Was when and it doesn't even mention that God killed an animal. All it said was God made took skins and made coverings. Well, where did he get the skins? He had to kill something. So he probably killed a who knows, a deer, a cow. Uh, and I also believe with that curse, you know, I don't think there, there obviously were not man eating creatures, <laughs> right? There were not flesh eating creatures. There were not animals of prey predators because there was no death. So everything changed at that moment. You think lions and tigers were just big kitties? Yeah. They might not even they would have they wouldn't even needed the fangs that they have you know there's why would they need it to eat plants so right. whatever happened transformed every creature pretty much. Um, you can speculate the Bible doesn't talk about it so you you can't go too much into it but obviously something changed in. Well, right after I I'm pretty sure right after. Right after the ark right right after uh, Noah and the ark. I believe it says that um, I believe it says that the animals were were going to be uh, afraid of people at that point. I think it was right after that. Yeah, the um... Uh, yeah, basically the uh, well, and God actually the first time that God ever told the uh, told mankind that they could eat of any animal of the field, you know, they could eat any animal they wanted to. Um, We're we're looking things up, folks. Forgive me. So right after, so right after the basically the Noah left the ark. Right. Um, Noah built an altar to the Lord, and taking some of all the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. God said he will never destroy. Never he will never curse the ground because of humans. He will never destroy with with water. Uh, Genesis 9, verse 2, the fear and dread of you will fall on all the beasts of the earth and on all the birds in the sky and on every creature that moves along the ground and on all the fish in the sea, they are given into your hands. 
Everything that lives and moves about will be food for you, just as I gave you the green plants. I now I give you I now give you I now give you everything. But you must not eat meat that still has the lifeblood still in it. So um yeah, so the, the relationship between man and animal changed. Uh, animals are scared to death of human beings. Doesn't mean they won't attack them, but they are, you know, they don't, you know, you, you very, very rarely see a wild animal unless, you know, somehow it becomes familiar with the with people or the person. Just walk up to a human being and, you know, so. Right. You'll see stuff in parks where squirrels get used to people and, you know, of course, they're, they're after the food, you know. They're not after the people, they're after the food. But deer, you know, they hear they hear a human being, they're gone, you know. They, they're scared of them. They're scared right. of humans. And that's uh, that wasn't like that before. And uh, it was probably like that before the flood. I mean, I don't know if that, you know, how that was. But after the fall, obviously, it was different how much different it was between then and after the flood. I don't know, but you know, cause those animals that were on the ark with Noah for, for a, a year, obviously they got along fine. And then after they were released and then started to multiply that, you know, and God said, well, they're, you know, they're going to hate you or they're going to, they're going to be, they're going to dread you. I guess basically was so they're going to fear you. So, uh, yeah, so sin caused sin caused the relationship between God and man to change, and then sin caused God to wipe out almost every human being in the world, and and it caused a you know caused a change in the relationship between man and creation. So you know, in the New Testament, when uh, Peter talks about it, Paul talks about how creation groans. You know, creation is creation is uh it's not what it was you know creation is cursed right and uh christ redeemed mankind from their sin but he also redeemed creation from the curse of the fall so it hasn't all happened yet but that was part of the part of his mission Sorry, I'm looking. I'm still looking up that. Uh... Oh, it doesn't matter. Okay, cool. Uh, anything so, else, sir? Um, let's go back to. So yeah, this this ch this chapter here, creation doesn't get into. Doesn't really get into the fall and everything. I'm sure that'll come later on. So this is basically what they call the probation period, where God is. They call it a covenant of works. Uh huh. God, God gave Adam one. You know, He gave him things to do: till the garden, take care of it. You know, name the animals, watch over my animals. Only one thing you're not allowed to do: eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That that was the only thing he was not allowed to do. And he couldn't help himself. <laughs> so that's what they call the probation period. Some uh, I've I've ta I've asked people how long they thought that was, and people think it was not a very long period. It was not years and months, and it was probably weeks or days. Mm. So before Adam disobeyed, and uh, you know, you get into the whole thing with the serpent and everything. So uh, Satan had basically you know occupied a an animal a creature I so would you, think. Th you think uh things went downhill relatively fast that's what i've been told okay. i could i can't you know i don't know i haven't studied it i just asked people how long do you think it took adam before he sinned and most most answers i get are not very long so I'm not talking hundreds of years. You know, I was just wondering because as far as we know, there were no children at that time. They didn't have children yet. So they did have children later and they had a lot of them. So we're, I would think that 
it, it, it wasn't very long. You know, maybe that's the reason most people say that it wasn't very long because they're the Bible does not mention any children. You know that God made God made clothing for Adam and Eve. Didn't say He made it for their kids. So I'm assuming they were by themselves. So how long would it have been before they had children? You know all that kind of stuff. So that's all that's all speculation. But I probably would, not very long. I would hope. I would hope just for their sake they had at least. A couple of years, at least before things. I mean, come on, walking with walking with the Lord in the in the garden. I would. Yeah. I. I mean, my optimistic. What would I want? At least a couple of years. If you know, come on, give me one year at least before. I mean, that soon and things go downhill and you you know you're just like, oh man, I had it so good. Uh, I don't even want. To, I would hope that they had more time than that. In the presence of the Lord, I would hope so. Before they did, they just lost everything. I would hope yeah. so anyway. Uh, yeah. So, I'm trying to find where God basically told. God makes God makes Eve and uh, trying to find the creation what they call the creation mandate where God, Adam and Eve were told to multiply and I think that was after the fall. We're looking things up, folks. Uh, it must have been before the fall, but there are different. What there are different times. Like Genesis will go back later on. It'll go back, bef, you know, back to creation. Like after the after the flood, it'll go back to creation and talk more about creation. So, um, there there is a mandate, a creation mandate, where God tells, you know, tells man, which is man is Adam and Eve, to multiply and. Uh, you know, and so basically subdue the earth, you know. Right. So that's what they call the creation mandate. Yeah, here we go. No, this is in Genesis. Genesis 1, 20, 28. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. So... If they were going to be faithful to that, how long would it have been between the time that they were created and the time they fell? They had not yet multiplied, so as far as we know. So anyway, that's just you know, it's just something to think about. But it probably wasn't very long. I hope so. I hope it was long. Unfortunately. <laughs> I hope it was long. I won't hear of it. I won't hear but, of a couple of days. But that's what uh that's what that's what Christ came to restore is our relationship with God and that's what he did and one day we will walk in the presence of God again amen amen all right folks that was chapter four creation paragraph one two and three that's that's the end of it uh Mr. Davis anything else to say before I end us in prayer no next uh next time we will we will go into chapter five, which is God's or divine providence. So that'll be fun. All right. All right. I want us in prayer. Thank you, everybody. Whew. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for uh, the word supplied. Thank you for um, giving us the wisdom and insight to um to to vocalize your word out loud lord jesus thank you for the ears that are going to hear it we pray that uh, whoever hears it whenever they hear it that they may be edified by your word lord jesus and we believe that none of your word does not return void father we thank you and praise you 
Thank you for Jim, Lord Jesus. Thank you for my friendship with him. Thank you for the technology that we can do this when he is in South Carolina and I am in uh, uh, California, <laughs> Southern California, Lord. Thank you. Uh, please continue to bless us and please bless this podcast that um, uh, others may come to know you as we know you as Savior, Lord Jesus. We pray and ask in your name. Amen. Amen. And as always, Ephesians 5, 15 and 16, therefore look carefully how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil.